This is the conservatory, the Barbican Conservatory, and uh, it's very close to the Barbican Art Gallery where we have Radical Nature, an exhibition um, about art and architecture for a changing planet. The exhibition not only explores contemporary art from the 60s till today, but also looks at how architects have used nature or have taken inspiration from nature or have responded to how nature progresses and grows. For example, we have um, a great pioneer of architecture, Richard Bach, Mr. Fuller, with a film done by his uh, grandnephew, in which he explains how he was always looking at natural phenomenon to take inspiration for his great inventions, and this is shown in uh, inside a geodesic dome. But we have um, also younger architects, like for example, RNZ from uh, Francois Roche and Stéphanie Laveau, um, who are two architects practicing in Paris, looking at how nature and architecture can collaborate to create the built environment. And to expand on, uh, on this particular theme, we also have uh, put together a series of events in which uh, we invited architects and, uh, and ecologists to talk about how uh, our relationship to nature in particular um, when we build a city or when we build a house can be improved or looked in a different way. My name is Michael Paulin, I'm an architect. I'm particularly interested in an area of architecture that's uh, called biomimicry. And that's really about looking to nature as a source of inspiration for new solutions, particularly sustainable solutions. So I became very interested in the connections between biology and architecture, mainly when I was working on the Eden Project. It was really a revelation for me, seeing what an amazing storehouse of design ideas nature can be. And we turned to nature at pretty much every stage in that project, from the very early strategic stages, looking at soap bubbles and the way that soap bubbles um, interact. Um, and even, even at the detailed stage, we looked at dragonfly wings to help us resolve some of those steel junctions. And two years ago, I decided to set up my own company so that I could focus exclusively on this, this area of biomimicry and, and architecture. And I've been working on a project called uh, the Sahara Forest Project, which proposes quite a radical way of, of generating abundant amounts of fresh water in some of the most water-stressed parts of the planet. If you look at the way that an ecosystem works, it, it really is a model of efficiency. Uh, any kind of waste from one organism becomes the nutrient for another. And there's a huge amount that we can gain from trying to mimic that in, in the way that we organize our man-made systems. Biomimicry shows the potential to go beyond just mimicking natural forms and interesting shapes from nature, but actually going beyond those forms and, and trying to understand the principles that lie behind those, and then really trying to apply that technology um, to, to architecture. So it, rather than being biomorphic, uh, which is just uh, copying natural forms, is truly biomimetic. It's understanding nature's principles and the, the kind of principles that have developed with the benefit of maybe 3.8 billion years of, of research and development. I think that um, some of the artists, and in particular the architects who we selected for this exhibition, provide some uh, visionary and inspiring ideas which um, propose a completely new way of integrating architecture and nature, which is not just let's reduce um, the amount of uh, CO2 emitted by this particular building, but it really is more um, a collaboration between the natural world and the built environment. Yeah.